we're going to look at an experiment which is going to use the properties of acids and bases and to find the percentage of the compound calcium carbonate in some eggshell. And the first thing to do is to think about how you would do this theoretically. Uh, what reactions would you use? And then, having chosen that, uh, what equipment would you need? So pause and answer those questions. Uh, because we're dealing with acids and bases, so goggles, lab coat or apron, and careful manipulation of the chemicals and the glassware, clear up any spill immediately. And here are the instructions that you're going to be given. Uh, pause to read those, uh, but our objective is to find the percentage mass of calcium carbonate in eggshell. And the materials, some eggshell, some one molar hydrochloric acid, some 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, and some uh, phenolphthalein as an indicator. And here's the equipment, and you can pause that to see what you, you're going to use. Uh, and a reminder here, a review of the titration equipment. We're not going to use number four, uh, but we're using all of the other items at some stage through the experiment. And here's a summary of what you're going to do. Uh, mass the eggshell sample uh, accurately, uh, grind the eggshell, and it may be a good idea to actually mass the ground eggshell to make sure you haven't lost any in the, uh, uh, the mortar. And you're going to place the crushed eggshell in an Erlenmeyer flask and uh, prepare a volumetric pipette with a small amount of the one molar uh, hydrochloric acid for rinsing. And then add exactly 25 uh, millilitres of the acid to the crushed eggshell sample uh, in, uh, in a beaker or an Erlenmeyer flask. Um, stirring until no more gas is produced, so the reaction has completed. And then add three drops of your indicator. The second part of the procedure uh, is to titrate the excess acid from the acid eggshell reaction with a sodium hydroxide solution in a uh, burette. So you've got your reaction vessel with the eggshell, leave it just there, with the excess HCl and add three drops of phenolphthalein and then complete the titration. Remember to have uh, rinsed the burette with your solution first. Remember to fill the burette and also um, to take your initial uh, reading um, very carefully. And if you need more than is in the burette, stop at the 50 mils and top it up. And so here's a summary, and you can pause that to, to read the summary. And then you're going to analyze your data. Uh, so what have you got? You've got the mass of the eggshell, you've got the amount of the sodium hydroxide solution in terms of volume, um, and you know the molarities of the sodium hydroxide and of the hydrochloric acid. Why would you add it with a volumetric pipette versus a graduated cylinder? Oh, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. Um, the uncertainty for this, yeah, it's like 0 0.01. The uncertainty for your um, uh, your graduated cylinder is 0 0.1. Now, when you make this, should you take it right out of the stock solution? Why not? Because you'll contaminate the stock solution. Now. What else, what other safeguards? So these are all possible questions that you could be asked on your lab. Um, like on for section A of paper two, paper three. 
Um, so what would you want to do to this? Are you, so you, you pour this into another beaker, your hydrochloric acid, you fill this. Is there any other precautions you want to take? Distilled water? Why distilled water? What happens if you just if you rinse it with distilled water? I'll tell you this: you don't want to rinse it with distilled water. You want to rinse it with the acid. Oh, you want to rinse it with the acid, right? Because so then. It and why why don't you want to mix it with distilled water? What if we had mixed it with distilled water? What would happen? It would be diluted. The acid would be diluted. Now put the base. Could you get this in and then put the beer with it? That's all or not. for evacuate and when you need more so when this is empty like that then it can it will create the suction so if you will need to create it emptier you press a and squeeze it okay okay I think we need more. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. stop there and then record the volume and then refill. The foam's getting pink, but the whole solution isn't really changing color yet. Do keep going. Yeah. Right? <laughs> don't yeah. don't lump your mistakes with us, guys. Rude. <laughs> Here, let me take a pH just to verify. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys are close. Somehow you added acid. <laughs> so it looks. <laughs> Go ahead and clean up. <laughs> Wait, I feel like is that pink? Is that like pink? <laughs> <laughs> we got. So we, did, we did it. So take a reading. And then, so look at their data. And then, and then uh, some steps to do your calculation. Uh, what reactions are taking place? Just pause to write these two reactions 
the acid with the calcium carbonate in the eggshell, and then the excess unreacted acid uh, from the eggshell mixture with sodium hydroxide solution of known molarity. Um, and because with your equation you'll have seen it's a one-to-one -one, uh, uh, ratio of reacting moles, you can use this uh, equation to discover uh, the molarity and then the number of moles of your HCl that have not, have not reacted. And once you've got that, calculate the number of moles of HCl you had in your initial 25 mil sample before the reaction with the eggshell. And so to find the number of moles of HCl that reacted, you've got this initial number of moles of HCl in your 25 mil sample, plus the number of moles that were in excess after the reaction with the uh, eggshell that you got from the titration that you've just done. And then you're going to calculate um, uh, the number of moles of calcium carbonate that reacted, having found the moles of HCl. And you need to look at the mole ratio from the equation. What's the ratio of HCl to CaCO3? You're going to look at the balancing coefficients. And then you're going to calculate the mass of calcium carbonate uh, using the equation that is here. And finally, the mass of the calcium carbonate from the last step, you're going to put that over the mass of the sample that you started with, multiply by 100, and that will give you your percentage calcium carbonate. And then this slide here, you can pause to look over a little bit of dimensional analysis and other uh, explanations that, uh, that we have uh, the percentage of calcium carbonate, etc. What would happen if, so you've got um, an incorrect burette reading you're reading from below the level of the meniscus. So what would that do to your final calculation? And you can uh, apply this to the percentage of calcium carbonate in the eggshell, um, but obviously would apply to any titration that, that you do. And the second one uh, is if you have an air bubble in the jet. So you haven't actually complete, uh, completely filled the jet, which you normally do. Uh, so what's going to happen when you turn the tap on? Uh, what's going to happen to your uh, actual results of your calculation? So other things to think about, you don't expel all the liquid from the pipette. The Left hand diagram at number three shows a bit more liquid than you'd expect to be left. And so you've added a bit less than 25 milliliters of HCl. How would that uh, affect your results? And so you use uh, in number four too much, um, I put universal indicator, or indeed we used phenolphthalein instead of three drops. So You've got more indicator, might be a bit darker, but you've got more liquid there. And how will that affect uh, your results? Uh, the fifth one is looking if there's, uh, uh, we thank uh, WIS Team Science and Ms. Hager's IB chemistry class uh, for the help with this lab.